Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to install the Freezer 34 on a AMD ITX motherboard. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the Arctic Freezer 34 into a AM4 socketed board. Now, this particular board is the ASRock B450 Mini ITX. Uh, the procedure is going to be pretty much the same for all AM4 boards. So if your board is slightly different, don't worry about it too much. The actual fitting principle is exactly the same. Now some of the things we're going to need for this installation are a cross-headed screwdriver, possibly some scissors, and all of our components laid out ready to go. Now the first thing you need to do is for the standard AMD backplate is to remove the two plastic retaining clips. So there's four screws that hold them on. So that's just a matter of unscrewing the screws and then removing the plastic. Now the back plate, which is actually beneath this, you need to keep hold of. And I would suggest keeping these old bits, put them in a bag separately or put them in your motherboard box, just in case you ever decide to change the cooler at a later date or you have to RMA it for some reason. So the next thing to do is to install the mounting pillars. Now in the box you get three sets of mounting pillars for AMD, Intel 11 5X and 2000XX. So in this particular instance we want the AM4 ones and on the actual pillars themselves there's a slight indentation or mark on each one. Now one of them has got no marks at all, one's got one mark and the other one's got two marks. Now for AM4 you want the one which has got one mark. So using the coarser thread just hand screw these into the four mounting areas. If you wish to use a box wrench or something similar to tighten these up, you're more than welcome to do so, but it isn't entirely necessary. You can just do them hand tight. Now the next thing to do is to prepare the cooler for installation. Now the cooler comes as standard in the box with the fan attached, so all you need to do is to flick up the metal brackets to release the fan, and put the fan to one side for later use. Now what we're gonna to need to do is to install the brackets to the side of the cooler. Now actually on the mounting base there is a ridge, so you can't do this wrong. It will only fit in one way or in one position. So this is the AM4 mounting method with the locating lugs on the inside. If you're doing this on a Intel board, then literally you just flip it around to the other side and you'd have the lugs on the outer edge. So once you've got the mounting bracket positioned, using the small threaded screw, just tighten the screw. You may find it useful to have a slightly longer cross-headed screwdriver to gain access. And again, once it's tight, just give it a little bit of a turn just to snug it. And then repeat the procedure on the other side. So again, the fine screw, straight through the hole and into the mounting bracket. If for some reason when you try to screw it up, you find some resistance, unscrew the thread until you feel a click and then you'll know it's in the right position. Then you can thread it in nicely and tighten it up. Again, once it gets to the end, give it another slight turn just to make sure it's secure. So when you've got this far, this is how your cooler should look. So now we need to apply some cooling paste to the base of the CPU onto the heat pipes. Now that is what the scissors are for because you do get supplied in the box some MX4 compound and I find it quite difficult to actually tear it. So ideally if you just snip the end and then you can use pressure like you would with toothpaste and ideally you want to have the paste in four lines along the heat pipes. Now some people may question this method uh, but that is what 
Arctic cooling actually recommend. So that is what I'm going to do. It's not the easiest of things to do. So hopefully when you're done, you should have it ending up looking like this. So four lines of coolant or paste along the four heat pipes. Now don't worry too much if your, uh, your work's a little bit on the messy side. Due to compression, when this is installed, the paste will flatten out. Now some people may prefer to do the P method and just put a blob in the middle. Again, it's entirely up to you. There is scientific, well, semi-scientific evidence that either method actually works. So if you're a bit unsure and you don't think you've got enough on there, then use whatever's left in the uh, sachet and just put a little blob in the middle just so that it spaces out nicely. So now we've got our cooler prepared and ready. So all we need to do now is to install the cooler onto the motherboard. Now, ideally, if you look at the logo on the top of the cooler, there is an Arctic cooling logo. So ideally you want that to be facing towards you and up the right way. And all you do is lower the CPU cooler onto the mounting pillars and also onto the CPU itself and make sure all four are lined up. So that's on there nicely. Make sure obviously as well that you've got plenty of clearance for any other components, such as VRM coolers, anything like that. So now we've got that installed, now we can use the thumb screws. There's four included thumb screws and they have got a cross-headed screw type on the top. So you can either do these up by yourself by hand if you wish to, or you can use a screwdriver. Now these are best to do a few turns in each of the corners rather than go into the fully tightened straight away. Just do about three or four turns just so it actually gets the thread started. And you can do it in a crisscross method. You can do one side first if you want to, just make sure you don't apply too much pressure to either side so you get a nice even pressure across the entire CPU base. You may find you can actually do these up fully by hand, or if you feel it needs a little bit more, then you can use a cross-headed screwdriver. Again, a longer screwdriver might be useful. So a couple of turns, and try and do it into a crisscross pattern. Keep on going until all the screws are tight. Okay, so that's our CPU cooler mounted. Now you can, if you want to, you can actually take it up and have a look, give it a visual inspection just to make sure that it looks flush and is actually, and there's no air gaps or anything like that. Just make sure it all looks very straight and true. So that's it, that is our CPU cooler mounted to the CPU and to the motherboard. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and reattach our cooling fan. Now the cooling fan, you want the cable where it exits the frame to be at the bottom. And then line up the cooler and the fan. And there is actually a ridge on the side so you can see if it's in the right position. Now ideally you want to get it so that there's four mounting holes or screw holes. Ideally try and get those mounted so you can see about half of the mounting hole through each one of the areas. So this is a little bit low, so it's gonna raise it up very slightly. And then all you do, apply some pressure onto the clip and it should clip straight into place. and check the fan to make sure there isn't anything catching or sticking. Well, that looks absolutely fine. So the last thing to do is to connect the PWM header to the motherboard. Now, most motherboards will have this connection in the top right, if you're looking at the motherboard face on. So generally, you're gonna find it somewhere around in this corner. Obviously, do refer to your owner's manual for your particular motherboard to see where your connection goes. Now this is also a good time if you are connecting additional fans or installing 
a rear fan with this model, then install that first and then connect up the fan to the PWM sharing connection. But we're not doing that in this occasion, so all we need to do is to plug in the fan to the four pin header. And there is the connector plugged into the top of the motherboard. Now, when you've got this installed in your chassis, you can, if you want to, you can tidy up the wiring by just tucking that underneath if need be, and then taking the PDO and cable behind the motherboard if you wish to, to connect up to other fans. Again, really, it's a computer component, so you can do pretty much what you like with it. Just make sure, again, that there's nothing sticking out or is anything's gonna interfere with the rotation of the fan. So that's pretty much it. Now what we can do, if you're gonna be installing this into your motherboard, you can install your RAM, and as you can see at the moment, there is actually quite a considerable clearance between the fan and the RAM sticks. So if you are using RAM sticks with a slightly larger heat spreader, then you shouldn't find this to be any problem whatsoever. But there we go. That is how to install the Arctic Freezer 34 onto your AM4 motherboard. You can also, if you wish, you can scan the QR code on the instruction leaflet that comes inside the box. And again, you'll get similar instructions to what I've given you. If you've got any comments or questions, feel free to put them in the comments section below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and we'll hopefully see you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.